What's good everybody, it's your man Akeem and welcome to today's vlog. I'm here to give you my grades for the NFC South Division teams for their selections of this year's NFL Draft. I think this is going to be a scary division this season. They have so many great players and they picked up a lot of outstanding players for this year's draft. I'm going to start with the Atlanta Falcons. They had a, a tremendous draft. I liked how they traded up to the number 6 selection to pick up Julio Jones, the receiver from Alabama. He's an outstanding athlete and an All-American. Big guy, and he's going to work opposite of Rhodey White. Him and Rhodey White, receivers from Matt Ryan, ooh, that is nasty. This, these two combinations are just going to be crazy in the NFL, and everybody's going to key, key on these players. Now, in the third round, they picked up Akeem Dent, the linebacker from Georgia. He struggled through his first three seasons in college football, but in his senior year, he exploded. I think he could complement Mike Peterson and Curtis Lofton in the linebacking core. And in the fifth round, they picked up a great running back and Jaquiz Rogers from Oregon State. He's a nit small, swifty kind of guy, and he could run in between the gaps. He's a, he could be a great compliment for Michael Turner at the running back position. He could give him a couple of breathers. The thing I love most about this kid is that he could catch the ball outside of the backfield, and he rarely fumbles the football. He has a tight grip, small guy, smart kid, and he's just determined to do well for this team. I do like that selection. I really think they should have went with the defensive end earlier in the draft, but they ended up picking Cliff Matthews out of South Carolina. He's a decent player, but I, I, I think they should have went with the defensive end earlier to help out the secondary, because um, last season they didn't do too well in the passing um, defense. And so they really needed some help in the secondary. They really needed a pass rusher opposite of John Abraham, but they did pick up Cliff Matthews. Now with the Julio pick, I I have to give this team an A minus. They had an outstanding draft and a great trade. Having Rhodey White and Julio Jones as a receiving core, ooh, that is just going to be sick. And I really can't wait to see how they perform this season. So I have to give them an A minus. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they had a great defensive draft. They ended up picking Adrian Claiborne, the defensive end from Iowa, with their first pick. And in the second round, they picked up Daquan Bowers, the defensive end from Clemson. He was an All-American who led the nation in sacks last season. Yes, his stock dropped just a little bit, but this was still a steal for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, they have Gerald McCoy at the defensive tackle position. With Adrian Claiborne and Daquan Bowers and, the, and each end of the defensive line, this is going to be scary for most quarterbacks in the NFC South and in the NFL. Watch out for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got a young defensive line and they are all hungry and this team is growing. And in the third round they picked up Mason Foster, the linebacker from Washington. This kid was very over underlooked. He was underrated in my opinion and overlooked for NFL scouts. This player is all over the field. 163 tackles last season and, and 14 of them were tackled for loss with six and a half sacks. This kid, he led the nation in tackles last year and he was an outstanding player. He is all over the field. He could run sideline to sideline. Him and Barrett Rude at the linebacking core, this is going to be a scary defense in the NFL. And then in the later rounds, they picked up Amar Black in the fifth round, the safety coming out of Florida. He's a good solid player. They um Akeem Talib most likely will not be part of the team next season because of his uh legal duties and legal uh obligations on the side. He got caught up with the uh feds a little bit and I don't think he's gonna be part of the team. He might end up doing some jail time. So they really need some help in the secondary and I think Ahmad Black is a solid player. And one steal that one sleeper that I really forgot about um later in the draft, they ended up picking up Allen Bradford, the running back from USC. A couple of times during his career, he ended up carrying the team to victories. And this is a great back. 242 pounds who runs a 4-5-40. This is going to be a great compliment for LeGarrette Blunt. So overall, I have to give Tampa Bay Buccaneers an A. They had a solid draft, and I really did like their picks, especially on the defensive side. Probably had the best defensive picks in the NFL draft this season. Great job, Bucks. Now, the New Orleans Saints, they had another great draft as well. They ended up picking Cameron Jordan, the defensive end out of Cal, with their first selection. He's a solid player who could get to the quarterback, a great sack master. This was a good selection. And in the second round, they picked up Mark Ing Their second pick, they ended up picking Mark Ingram, the running back from Alabama. The Saints really needed some help in the running game, and I think he would definitely help this team up and boost, boost up the rankings in the NFL in rushing. He reminds me so much of Emmitt Smith because of how short and stocky he is, and he is very hard to tackle. This was a great selection. And in the third round, they picked my number one inside linebacker and Martez Wilson out of Illinois. They picked up the number one running back coming to this year's draft and the number one um, inside linebacker, in my opinion. Wilson is a great fit 
for the uh, Saints, and I think he could complement well with Jonathan Vilma. He's an outstanding athlete. And the third round, they picked up J Johnny Patrick, the cornerback from Louisville. He's a good cover player, and I think he, he's a very physical and aggressive player. He's plays with some violence. I really like this kid. He could out also support the run as well. And in the seventh round, they picked up a good defensive end, and Greg um, Romeus, the defensive end out of Pittsburgh, he was he ended up missing most of his senior year due to injury. But in his first three seasons, he had at least 10 tackles for loss. So he could definitely get in that backfield and cause havoc for quarterbacks and running backs. That was a good selection. And in the seventh round, they ended up picking up Martez Wilson's teammate at linebacker, the outside linebacker, Nathan Bussey. He was a great compliment from Wilson. I think both of these players can continue working well together in the NFL. So overall, I have to give the New Orleans Saints a B+. Plus. They had a great, solid draft, and I do like their picks. Now the Panthers, they're not they're not the least team. They had a decent draft. I have to give them a C overall. They ended up picking Cam Newton, the quarterback out of Auburn, with their first selection, the number one overall pick. This kid is athletic. He can run the ball, and I think he has a better arm than Vince Young. A lot of people are comparing him to Vince Young, but I think Cam Newton just has a little bit more of an edge because of his passing game. He's a very great athletic quarterback. I really think they should have went with a defensive tackle with their first pick and help the defensive line. But they ended up picking two defensive tackles in the in the third round with Terrell McClain from South Florida and Sion Fua, the t defensive tackle from Stanford. I didn't really like the Fua um, pick, but McClain was a, is a solid player, and I think he could do well for the Panthers and cause problems in the, in the run game for most teams. He's a good, solid player, and I did like that pick, but the Fua pick I wasn't really impressed about, by. But that was a decent pick. Now, in the fifth round, they picked up Kilua Polaris, the receiver from Hawaii. A lot of people talk more about Greg Silas' his teammate, but Polarius also um, had a couple thousand yard seasons at Hawaii. He's a great receiver, and I think he could help out Cam Newton just a little bit in the passing game. They didn't really do too. They were last in the league in passing last season, so they really needed a quarterback. But I think they should have got a quarterback in the third round because of the stock in the in the defensive tackle position. There was just too high of a prospect in Marcel Darius. I really think they should have went with Darius. But Cam Newton is still a great project, though. But they also gave him some help in the 6th and 7th round in the line positions with center Zach Williams from Washington State. He's a decent center. And he ended up grabbing his teammate, Lee Ziemba, the um, offensive tackle from Alabama. So he does have some people coming into his team that from his um, Auburn squad. And I think this is a good, was a great selection, helping him get just a little bit of protection in the line of scrimmage. And on the defensive tackle position, they did pick up a, a decent de defensive tackle in McLean. So overall, I have to give this team a C, just a solid C. I don't really think they should have went with the quarterback with their first pick, but Cam Newton is an outstanding athlete, and they just could not pass on him. I think they're going to probably trade Jimmy Clark into another team or just have him in a bench going second string. And I think um, Jimmy Clausen will most likely leave to another team, so they might get rid of him. But I do like the Cam Newton pick. It's not bad. They, they have a better quarterback, more mobile, and he could run the ball with Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. The, now the, the Panthers were 13th in the league in rushing, and I think he could help complement that just a little bit more with his legs. But we'll see what he do, do, does with his arms. For my next video, I'm going to talk about the AFC East Division and talk about their grades for their picks of this year's NFL Draft. Thank you for watching today's blog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.